guys, so today I am joined by my very own braid girls. This is Paige. And this is Kaya. So today what we wanted to talk about is what it's like to be a farm kid <laughs> and why exactly we chose this lifestyle for our family. So what chores do you have when you wake up in the morning? Um, I have rabbits, goats, and quail. And, <laughs> and what do you do with all of them? I feed them, water them, do my stuff, and so... So whenever you see an animal in distress, it's your job to either run and save her or run and get me, huh? And what time did you get up this morning to do that? Um, I think it was six. It was six, huh? Okay, so, and, little Kaya. And I, too, and I also help Paige with her chores. And Game, dress, bedroom. Paige is outside doing rabbits. Kaya is inside washing the breakfast dishes by herself. What is it you do? Wash the dishes. Wash the dishes, and she does a really good job. Huge. Traditionally, the reason that there was a summer holiday was because in the summer, the children were required to be home so that they could help with the planting and the harvesting and all the farm related things that were really, really intensified between April and maybe August. Now, my kids are a huge help to me in, in running to get things when I need them to or just little things. Their, their presence here on our farm makes it run a lot smoother. They are homeschooled and for this little bit we have decided to do more hands-on education rather than book studying. So for instance, we do pay Paige for her chores because they are so extensive and it's such a huge help. And so when she gets paid, she gets to see that when she doesn't get her chores done, she gets paid less. When she does her chores really well, she gets paid more. And I feel like that gives them some real world experience in what happens when you're a hard worker and when you're valuable to your empo employer and what it's like when you're not helping. Okay, so and, is there anything you want to tell them before you go upstairs? And okay, so I, now that the girls are gone, I wanted to talk about how we have done this. How is it that we have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old that are capable of doing all the dishes without supervision, are capable of taking care of the animals, uh, well enough that they're not dying and so I wanted to talk a little bit about our, our parenting mentality. I have three books that oddly enough you wouldn't think would be related to parenting but they really are. And the first one is Cottage Economy by William Cobbett and it's a farming book from the 1800s or is it 1700s? Um, it was a long time ago. And the reason he wrote the book was to help peasants get out of poverty, to help the working class find a way to pull themselves up and out of hunger and drudgery and suffering. And what he pushes in this book, which I've read this so many times and I read it all the time, and it, it's the source of so many of my farming techniques and just my philosophy on life. But his philosophy was that to have a child is a responsibility to the parent. He firmly believed against public schooling. He believed that a single man paying taxes so that a married man's children could learn how to read was terrible and a, and a disservice to the children themselves. He believed this because he said that the time that the children were spending in school, if they whether they wanted to be there or not, was time that they could have been learning a trade, time that they could have been learning a craft that would feed them and bring income into their family. That was his belief. He said the worst thing you could do to a child of yours was to not teach them a skill. And so he said that the more skills your children have, the better off they will be in life, the more power they will have, the more they can choose their employer rather than having to go to the, the person who was willing to put up with the fact that they didn't know anything, the person who was willing to train them in something they should have learned as a child. So William Cobbett, wow. Children. The second one that I absolutely love is Family Friendly Farming by Joel Salatin. 
and he really goes along the same lines. He says, give your child something to be responsible for and show them the blessings of their own labor. If your child is skilled at something, let them take that over. Rather than asking them to do something that's drudgery to them, notice what they're really good at and encourage them to perfect it and encourage them to find a way to profit from it and to beautify their surroundings. I, I, I believe that rather than looking at it as increasing in money, what it is is increasing in knowledge, it's increasing in skills, it's increasing in practical application so that rather than having to be told how to do something you can understand the value of research and to understand the value of prayer thoughtful prayer I know some people don't pray but maybe meditation would be an equally good word to meditate and search for meaning in your life and to teach a child at a young age to, to look at the world that way and to be looking outside of yourself for opportunities to bless the people around you, the, the better off you are, the more you can help others. It's hard to give from an empty cup. And so family-friendly farming, the way that he did this was that his son liked rabbits and had some rabbits that he bred that he would put out on pasture so that they were grazed rather than purely pellet-fed. And that he would uh, take out the rabbits that couldn't survive in that kind of situation until he managed to breed some really amazing rabbits. And his own business as a teenager was to breed and butcher these rabbits. And it, it, it's now a major part of Polyface Farm is these rabbits. They can't keep up with the demand. And he did that at a very young age and was allowed to keep the profits and was allowed to keep books on it. That kind of thing is what 4-H was meant to do. Is It was to teach young farmers how to keep records and how to select good breeding stock. And it, it all comes back in on itself. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is this book. It's called Simplicity Parenting by Kim John Payne with Lisa M. Ross. And the reason I want to talk about this one is if you're like, well, where am I going to find time and patience to teach my kids this way? Uh, they All they want to do is play video games and their rooms are always a mess and their attention spans are so short. Simplicity Parenting is about weeding out all the belongings that are not important to you, that are not important to your child. Rather than holding on to clothing and toys just because they came from Aunt Martha or just because they were expensive, um, is one of the reasons why the kids don't have time to do things. The other thing is redundancy and overemphasis on activities that things like football and baseball and soccer and ballet all in the same week leads to a frantic mother or father who's taking them to these um, a budget that is severely depleted by these activities and also a child who never gets to sit down and rest especially if they're in public school at what point are they allowed to rest and be children and to develop life skills rather than being chauffeured around to activities and so that's what this book is about. It's amazing. It talks about allowing the child to build a relationship with their belongings, that they have one special toy. And that if they're not capable of keeping their toys cleaned up, it means they have too many toys. And whether that pairs down to three or 25 toys, to be mindful of watching your child and see what toys they really interact with and getting rid of the rest. Same thing goes for clothes. If they're clothes that they really can't wear in their day-to-day -day activities without creating a huge amount of work for mom or dad to keep the laundry done, then maybe you need to change the way that, that they wear their clothes. Maybe you need to invest in dark colors. Maybe you need to in, invest in, in not investing. <laughs> uh, and, and these principles apply to adults too. When we have too many activities going on that the things that we really joy in and the things that we love to do are abdicated to things that are just busy work, uh, it's time to, to reassess your life. And so, I really believe in useful skills for kids. I really believe in 
them feeling like they are worthwhile in the family and that they're necessary, that they have a place and that they are so valuable to the family that you could never do without them. Rather than, rather than being the source of exhaustion in parents, that instead they be a blessing and a source of rest and pride for the parents. And, and these are some of the books that I use to do that. In order for this to work, I had to get rid of television. I had to get rid of television because it was a distraction in which chi children are sitting without their hands moving. Uh, the source of entertainment that we have is audiobooks because they're capable of moving and working at the same time that they're being entertained. And we got rid of the television a long time ago, and the only time now that we allow them to watch a movie is if we do need them to be able to sit and be a zombie, but we we take into account that we are purposely turning our children into zombies that sit and do not exhibit childlike behavior and motion during that movie. And we've really come down to eradicating those kind of activities from our life in which we are squandering the time that our children have to live. We don't want them to squander their time on entertainment that doesn't ever pay them back, that doesn't give them any skills. We want their entertainment to be something memorable. And um, along, along that line, we are working really hard on doing more fun things with our kids right now than we were previously. Um, to leave the house and go for a bike ride, to, to hold hands and walk down the lane to get the mail, to sit and knit and spin together, to create our meals together in a feeling of love and harmony to participate with the girls without there being raised voices because it isn't just about efficiency. It's also about them feeling loved and cherished. And we have been making lots more stuff to put on our Etsy channels, including books. Hiccups? Have you been putting hiccups on? No. Your no! Because you have hiccups. But we I have books. Mom has ebooks on the Etsy channel, and we're going to be making some books too. So. Go. And I have some of your yarn on the Etsy store too, don't I? Yeah. So go check that out. And Paige and Kai both like to sew little cloth dolls, and, and they're little, really cute. And little dresses. Little dresses. So. Okay, I'm going to finish my interview and you guys can go upstairs and finish what you were doing. Thank you for being brave girls with me. I love you.